right then, everyone. Thanks for all uh, turning up. Sorry, we're just a fraction late starting, just getting the, uh, the IT uh, bits and pieces sorted out. Anyway, I'd like to welcome to the IT presentation from the North Wales Network. Uh, and in particular, I'd like to uh, welcome Kevin Stone uh, from the Vulcan to the Sky Trust. Um, uh, I'm glad that Kevin can actually um, turn up to this lecture, as I say, uh, under uh, a slightly better uh, arrangement, or close, shall we say, because I know funding has been difficult with the current turn down in the, uh, in the economic climate, and though it has been a struggle for them to raise uh, sponsorship and the such like. But I, I think uh, the pledges are in. It's just getting the actual uh, funds uh, available to continue running. Um, all right, then, well, it's, uh, it's without uh, any further ado. Um, I'll, uh, I'll welcome Kevin to tell us all about the restoration of the, uh, of the Vulcan bomber, uh, X-ray uh, Hotel 558, isn't it? Thanks, Kevin. Thank I'll uh, dim the lights for you. Thank you. So, my name's Kevin. For those who know me, I'm coming on this taff. I come from the other part of the world, my new Sunny Port Talbot. And uh, for my sins, I'm the chief engineer and crew chief on 558. Uh, what I'll be doing this evening, uh, I'll give you a quick background into what brought the Vulcan about. A uh, quick history on our aircraft, 558. Then I'll take you through the restoration phase, what we actually went and done. Uh, take you then through, then through to the first flight, last year's display, and a little bit of what we're going to be doing now in the future, after well, so a broad brush of the entire project. Okay. There we go. Get something to hope. Uh... I'm worried about this Gilbert. He's not like other kids. What do you mean? Yesterday, I left him alone for a minute, and he disassembled the TV, our clock, and the stereo. That's perfectly normal. It's taken apart. Oh. The part that worries me is he used the components to build a ham radio set. Oh, dear. Is that bad? Normally, I'd want to run an EEG on him, but the machine isn't working. Set you off because I think we're engineers here. <laughs> okay, so where did I actually start off? Well, basically, this was back, say, in 1946, and three rather important people there. And in fact, the man in the middle, a month after this photograph, dropped the first bucket of instant sunshine over in Japan, and we started then at the nuclear race. So, obviously, what they decided from that then was. Britain needed its own nuclear deterrent. So they had the TISAB uh, review, and what they actually wanted is uh, a bomber that would actually cope with all the specifications they had there. And the main reason was to carry this small nuclear device. <laughs> Anybody know the name of it? It's the Blue Danube that was originally fitted, and, uh, and there's all its dimensions. So, it was basically a 20 kiloton weapon, and it was rather large, <coughs> hence needing a large bomber to fit it. So, what they actually done, Roy Chadwick, who actually designed the Lancaster uh, a few years prior to this, not many, came up with his first sketch drawing of the 698 jet bomber. This was actually done in 1946. And if you actually look at the outline of the sketch drawing and Boeing's next blended wing aircraft, which is actually a prototype at the minute, it looks rather the same, but you didn't put a copyright on it. Okay, so I actually started building the Vulcans, and the first ones were built then in the very early 50s. And what you can see here is the four Seminole series aircraft, and these were the prototypes of the first built. If you look at the the uh, handling characteristics of a delta wing aircraft. There were single seaters, dual seaters, and then from there then they built the first B1 prototype Vulcans there. 
This is what they were actually designed for. This is a QRA scramble, and their four Vulcans could be airborne within four minutes. So they get the scramble, they run out to the aircraft, press one button, which would start all four engines at the same time, fire up all the flying controls, the instruments, while they were strapping in, and they would all be airborne within four minutes. Rather impressive sight, wrap on your insides like I don't know what. Unfortunately, I've only got the one at the minute. So, they say so they came into service in the mid 50s, and then in the early 80s, when we started to scrap them, we decided we wanted to use them. So, Mikey decided, yep, yeah, we want to go down and fight in the Argies, and we went down to the Falklands and bombed Port Stanley. People say we missed, we got them, and I said, oh, you only got one, that wasn't very good. We only had to repair one hole. So, I think it was quite good. Uh, foresight was smack in the middle, it stopped them using the airport properly. And the thing was, what it actually showed them is that Britain had the capability to go down and bomb them. And it was just as easy to go to the Falklands, it is Buenos Aires. So it was just a little bit of a, a wake-up call. The Vulcan went down on several bombing missions, and a lot of them that went down lately was on actually anti-radar missiles, as opposed to the conventional bombing. So, a little bit of a history of our aircraft now, 558, and it is actually quite a unique aircraft because it was actually the first V2 ever come into service. It did its first test flight in May 1960. It actually started on the production line as a B1 bomber, and then they decided they changed it, upgraded it, they changed it from a DC powered system to an AC powered system, put bigger engines in, slightly bigger wing. And 558 was actually the first B2 off the production line. And there she is in the briny shaped little white wings. This was the first one to come in. And this was actually on this test delivery flight of what actually went and delivered on uh, 1st of July to Finningley. So this was, say, the first ever one in service. And it went into the OCU, Operation Conversion Unit. And this is where all the pilots. Once they've done the basic flying, know how to fly, they go to the individual units to get trained up on type. And our aircraft then was actually there as part of the training unit. Spent most of the time on the OCU until it went then to 27 Squadron on the maritime reconnaissance. That was another role that the, the Vulcan actually had in the early 70s and all that lot, which was the old sniffer pod, which is mainly what the, the Nimrods and all that lot do for the Marines. And as you can see now, they've changed. Because we was actually the nuclear deterrent for Britain from when it came to service in the 60s until I think it was early to mid 70s, where the submarines and Polaris missile actually took over. So what they've done then, they converted the Vulcan then back into its conventional role, <coughs> coming from the high level nuclear bombing down into the low level conventional bombing. They also kept the nuclear capability as a standby but obviously by coming down the low level, they decided to change the camouflage, so we went to the one that you now recognize that we actually fly around with. <coughs>